Hello and welcome to Matt's Thought for the Week. So this week I've been really getting my head around four little words and these are be, still and know. And I've counted seven times in the Bible where it says these words. I suppose if, if you'd like to challenge me, maybe there's some homework for you. Maybe you can go and have a look, have a search of your own. So I'm going to read to you from Psalm 46 verses 1 to 11. So if you'd like to go and grab a Bible, please do. If not, the words are going to be on the screen. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall, and God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It relates so much to the Psalms. So many of them expose such a war emotion that it just reassures me that when I'm going through stuff, that actually is really normal. And when I haven't got it all together, or I'm struggling, or God's feeling far away, that I haven't, I haven't failed. I haven't failed as a Christian. And the Psalms show that the reality of life with God is that there are ups and downs, there are doubts, there's uncertainty, there's questions. But page by page, the Psalms show us that God is there for us through it all. So when I was thinking about this Psalm, I was thinking, how does this relate right now? You know, how does it relate to what we're going through? And then God called me to think on the other times in my life when I've perhaps felt a similar thing. And I thought back to 2001 in 9-11 where a plane, a couple of planes I think, collided with the World Trade Centre in New York and waves of fear and terror swept the world. Uh, it was a horrible time. And then I remembered as well in Boxing Day 2004 there was a tsunami that slammed 11 countries. And that killed hundreds of thousands, and then there was hundreds of thousands more that had to deal with the deluge and the, the after effects of that event. But I don't know about you, but so soon I forget what that feeling is like. I'm so quick to forget what that feeling of fear feels like. But how different it is when we're living in it, when we're in the middle of the panic, the chaos and the fear. From time to time we'll hear some official or leader saying life will return to normal soon but I can't help wonder what does normal look like in a world filled with such pain, such confusion, such uncertainty and the tragedy of so much death right now. So this psalm is a really interesting one. It talks about natural disasters, it talks about earthquakes, it talks about mountains crumbling and then it talks about war and it talks about the geopolitical turmoil of kingdoms and I just wonder what does this mean for us what does those what do those four little words mean be still and know life is so busy and from time to time I don't even realize that I'm doing it I go from A to B I do the food shop on autopilot, I drive from place to place without even thinking it. And I constantly think, how good will it be when I can do this again? How good will it be when I can afford to do that thing? When I finally have time to do such and such. You can fill in the gaps if you like. And I so often live in a far off future where I kind of forget the here and now. I forget that I'm not in control. And I believe the lie that there's nothing that can stop me. And forget that it's so possible 
that something like what's happening right now could occur and turn worlds upside down. People's futures have been altered, plans have had to be cancelled, and goals have been scuppered because that's how we live, looking towards next. Not always enjoying the moment, the here and now. But when all the freedom is suddenly gone, it can make us feel so powerless. The things that we wrap our lives around, having enough, being able to go here and there and do this, so much and so often we believe those things will somehow make us secure, give us stability and protect us from this world of uncertainty. But these things we cling to, the ways of life we so enjoy, are also temporary. They're also disposable when we realise how fragile life is. When the world is crumbling around us, where do we look? Do we look to ourselves? Do we look to our government? Do we look to each other? Or do we look to God? In these times, I've had so many more opportunities to speak to people, to catch up with those that I hardly ever have time to talk to. And I've even found the opportunity to speak to people in the supermarket or at the park. I've made more time to pray and more time to reflect on God's Word. Busyness allows us to be swamped by the noise of everything going on. That we become distracted, we become worried, we become anxious and frustrated. And what I believe God is asking us to do is slow down. Put down what we're doing and just be. We become human doings, though we forget that we're human beings. Designed at times just to be. Just to be. And God is saying, be still and know that I am God. I've got this. I'm not surprised by the whole coronavirus thing. I saw this coming. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, is all it says in Matthew 11:28. I did some digging when I was thinking about these four little words, be still and know. And that little phrase, be still, that verb to be still comes from the root verb, rapha, which means to be weak or to let go. And in other words, to surrender ourselves completely to God completely. And I find that so difficult. I find it so hard to surrender everything to God. So what does it mean to be still and know? I hate silence. I'm quite comfortable in admitting that. And I'm so tempted to fill my moments of stillness, my quiet time with prayers, worship music or other noise that I think I'm just missing the point. God is calling us to just be still. And it's so often in the stillness that God is speaking that he comforts us and he brings us peace. And I love sharing this story from the Bible as a reminder. 1 Kings 19 says this. It tells the story of how God speaks to the prophet Elijah and the passage tells us that Elijah counters this moment of wind, earthquake and fire. And in those big moments of powerful, earthly noise, Elijah's expecting to hear God's voice. And instead, God speaks afterwards in the quietest whispers. So what would it mean for you today if God spoke those words to you personally? How would you respond? How would I respond? What I'm challenging you to do today, and me, is make some space to be still and know. Thank you.